Hello everybody, this is Tim here again. Okay, I just got done watching the new Leatherface movie. I've been really excited about seeing the prequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface. Uh, as far as the franchise Texas Chainsaw Massacre goes, anybody who's a horror fan and knows anything about horror knows that this franchise has had major ups and major downs. Just to, uh, anybody want, I've done reviews for all the other films. If you want to know my thought, my in-depth thoughts on them, just go watch those videos. But just to get quick into the franchise here before I jump into the movie, first film is a classic, one of the best horror films ever made, easy four stars out of four. The second one, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, is in my opinion a good three star out of four comedy, black comedy. Uh, the third film I would give two and a half. I think the third one in the unrated version is alright. Um, it suffers from still not having enough gore. Number four, the one Matthew McConaughey is just off the walls bad, but it is so bad it's good. As a so bad it's a good movie, easy four stars out of four, most enjoyable. Uh, shitty, so bad, it's good movie ever. Uh, but as a real film, it, I'd like to grade it as a real film. Obviously, it'd be zero. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake, I'd give three stars. I think the remake is good. It suffers from being too glossy and looking too glossy. But as a whole, it's good. I'd give it three stars out of four. It's a good modern horror film. The prequel to the remake, I'd give two stars. I think the prequel to the remake is okay. Uh, it's a time waster for me. It suffers from some illogical plot holes and just some illogical things in the script. It's okay. Uh, it just, it kind of just tries, it's, well basically, it's a prequel to the, the remake, but it just does the exact same thing as the remake over again. It tries to make up for its lack of story with just overwhelming piles of gore. So, you know, it doesn't really work. Um, but it's okay, just for the gore. Now, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, I despise the 3D movie. I hate it. I hate the 3D movie. Uh, the 3D flick, I'd give like half a star. Honestly, half a star for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. It's like one speck better than Texas Chainsaw Massacre Next Generation. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre Next Generation is way more entertaining. 3D is terrible. Just terrible. So many illogical plot holes and such a messy script. Just such a shitty movie. They had a good idea. Picking up from the original film and doing a direct sequel is a great idea. Terrible execution. No excuse for how bad that film is. Now on to Leatherface. I'll just go ahead and give my rating right off the top of my head. I was surprised by this film. It isn't great, and it's not as good as the original. If you're going in and think this is going to be as good as the original, you're, I'm sorry, there's, there's no, no Texas Chainsaw Massacre film is ever going to match the original. The original is a masterpiece. This film, in my opinion, is good. I'd give it three stars out of four. It's a good film. It's pretty much as good as the remake. It's almost as good uh, as uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, the black comedy one. One and two are my favorites. It's almost as good as two, in my opinion. Like almost, just like it's like a little more of a speck of being as good as two. Uh, what I like about this film is it's not a typical Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. Most of these films have kind of had the same setup, where it's a group of people being chased by the Chainsaw family or whatever. It's pretty much that same setup in all the films. Um, here they try to actually do something different. The movie's called Leatherface. It's a prequel story about Leatherface and how he becomes Leatherface, and it really is that. It's not like just uh, a fake prequel like the beginning was, where it's really just a remake of, another remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In this film, they seriously do focus on Leatherface as the main character. The film starts out, you got, there's going to be major spoilers here, so if you haven't seen the film, you've been warned. Uh, the film starts out, it's got Leatherface as a kid, he's with his mom, and um, his two brothers, you got like the young version of the cook and the young version of Nubbins from the original film, and uh, there's this guy who's been like stealing their pigs or whatever, or they, they think he's been stealing them, and basically it goes down to the idea of uh, like the first movie where the Sawyers kill like people who are intruders into their house and shit like that. And they want Leather they give Leatherface a saw for his birthday and they want him to kill this guy, but he won't do it. So you get a character arc here of Leatherface as not a killer and we can see how he becomes a killer, which is pretty cool. Um, and so he won't do it. And then we skip a little while later and the sheriff's daughter is like driving by with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend's character is actually Ted Hardesty. Who, who is like the uh, father, I believe, of Franklin and Sally, the characters from the original film, which is cool. Um, uh, or or not, maybe not the father, but uh, I know he's related to him in some way. It's been a while since I watched the first film, not since my review of it a couple of years back. But anyway, it's cool that he's here because I remember the character from, uh, mentioned in the original film. But um, so they're traveling down the road, and the little kid love the faces like dressed up as like a pig or a cow, or whatever, something like that, and she gets out of the vehicle and follows him uh, to the farm, uh, yeah, to, the, to the barn uh, at, his, uh, at his house, at his property, and she wants to help him, and uh, she walks over top of this hay and falls down on these spikes, and she gets killed, and it walks, uh, 
the cook, the young version of the cook, and he drops this 2x4 down her head, crushing her and killing her, putting her out of her misery. So basically they use like Leatherface as the to lure people in off the road or whatever to kill like stragglers or whatever they can get their hands on. But you get the idea that Leatherface didn't really want to do it. He's still not really interested in this. Pretty much in the movie, Leatherface is kind of like just, he's a character who's being pulled in like different directions. He's not born evil. He doesn't want to do evil shit, but he's being pulled in different directions. He doesn't know what to do. He's just really confused. And then the sheriff shows up played by Stephen Dorff and he's pissed off as hell. Uh, he doesn't have any evidence to convict him. So he sends uh, Jed uh, Sawyer or whatever to um, to this uh, institution for troubled kids to get back at Leatherface's mom or whatever because he knows that they had something to do with his daughter being killed. And he starts like going crazier and crazier through the movie. And you get to this institution, this is when it kind of becomes like Halloween. You're introduced to all these crazy type characters who are all like standard Texas Chainsaw Massacre type characters. This movie's this movie's a lot on gore. It's not as gory as you think it would be, but when the gore does happen, it's extreme. And it's just got it's got a couple crazy shit moments, um, and you get introduced to these other people at the institution. And one of the problems with the movie is Leatherface is obviously who you think it's going to be. He's the nicest kid of the group. He's like this really sweet boy named Jackson or whatever. He's the uh, obviously the nicest kid of the group is going to be Leatherface, and he makes friends with this nurse there. And one thing leads to another. They do a big breakout. And there's like this mentally handicapped boy named Bud who has like bipolar disorder. And if you piss him off, he'll fly off and kill you. But if you don't, he's just like really gentle and doesn't hurt anything. He's best friends with Leatherface's uh, teen version character or whatever. And Leatherface is like a good looking guy too. And um, they pretty much this big, this breakout happens and him and his, uh, these, the other inmates break out of there. And the main two is this blonde haired girl and this guy named Isaac or whatever they call him, Ike. And he's like the craziest one of the group. He just wants to shotgun people, natural born killer style. And so him and her, like they go around, like they go to this diner, and they take one. They take the, the nurse hostage that Leatherface had a crush on. They go to this diner, and um, they just massacre all these people in there. You get some cool gore. She, uh, she, the blonde haired chick in the film, like steals the cop's gun. One of there's a cop in the diner. She steals his gun, like stabs him to the neck with a, a knife or whatever. Really cool gore. And then the dude Ike, he like blows this chick's brains out after he like takes a bite out of her neck. Really fucked up shit. <laughs> so be your warned. Um, and then Leatherface's character or whatever just tries to stop somebody from leaving. He, he doesn't want to hurt him, but he just tries to stop him. Because he doesn't want to make things worse than what they are. And the dude like punches him out. And then Leatherface just like flies off on him and starts like punching him in the face and knocks him down. Uh, the fat dude or whatever whose name is Bud, who's friends with Leatherface, he gets shot in the stomach. They manage to get out of there. Pretty much Leatherface's character has like the, he's really nice and sweet, but he has like these blackout moments where all at once he'll just get extremely violent and go into a rage um, like he can't control. And they're, they they travel to this abandoned motor home where there's this corpse. There's a corpse there for some random reason that was weird. That's another flaw of the movie that just happened to go to this abandoned RV or whatever, uh, camper, um, I mean trailer, and it's got a corpse in it. And it's just really weird that it's just there. And they go in there, and the blonde-haired chick and the guy named Ike are, like, screwing or whatever. And then they, they're, like, having sex with a corpse as well, the chick is, at the same time. And it's, like, really weird. It's, it's not that I have a problem with doing crazy shit in horror films, because they're horror films for a reason. But at the same time, this really feels forced in there, and it feels like they're doing crazy shit just to do crazy shit. It doesn't really kill the movie. Eventually, they get tired of the Ike guy's bullshit, and the guy, Bud, kills him and friggin' curb stomps his ass. Uh, is a cool scene, good gore. And then Stephen Dorff finds him blows the blonde haired chick's brains out and the dude that plays Iron Fist and that shitty show Iron Fist is in here, Stephen Dorff's deputy, and he's secretly like working for Leatherface's mom for money. He's gonna he's like trying to help her track down Leatherface before Stephen Dorff kills him. And he eventually he gets killed because he goes there to collect his money from her and she has nubbins and the cook ambushes ass and they kill him. Uh, that was pretty funny because I hate that I hate Iron Fist. Um, the fat boy he gets killed because he's uh, they they actually ran into these cops where the nurse is trying to get away and she runs into the cops and one of the cops like shoots him and then he then blows his brains out, blows the fat dude's brains out and then Leatherface you know, snaps again and starts like bashing the cop's brains out and crushes his head in the door and then him and the nurse get in the vehicle and try to take off. Now the nurse kind of like has a soft spot for him and he kind of has a crush on her. It kind of brings me back to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 where Leatherface was like really horny which I kind of get a laugh out of that. I like their, I would have liked their love relationship to have been ex explored just a little bit more but it is what it is. It's still good in the film. They take off. Stephen Dorff is like right behind him and he's blowing the shit out of the back of their vehicle and he shoots a shot through the vehicle. Blows off like big huge gory chunk of Leatherface's face. 
and he ain't good looking no more. And I love the effect though of like how his face is like hung halfway open or whatever. It looks cool. Uh, and then they wreck in this cool scene. The chick wakes up and they're back at like the farmhouse and Stephen Dorff has her there. He's going to kill Leatherface and then kill her because she's a witness. He's like went totally off the deep end by this point. It did seem like he went super crazy a little bit too fast, but at the same time, I, I, I understand what they're doing. Uh, and he's got Leatherface hanging there. He's going to kill him. And uh, then Leatherface's mom, who is actually his aunt as well, I guess, she, uh, as Stephen Dorff puts it in the film, she shows up with uh, Nubbins and the cook. They ambush Stephen Dorff, knock him out. Uh, they go over to the house. Stephen Dorff wakes up. He teams up with the uh, nurse. She decides to help him because she knows that he can help her escape. And they see all the cool Texas Chainsaw Massacre like bone decorations that were in the original movie. It's really neat how they tie it back to the original film like that. They're trying to get away. They get caught. And then they uh, egg Leatherface on to kill him because uh, he screwed up Leatherface's face. And Leatherface just like, finally, he's had enough shit. He's just been pulled in so many different directions. The character has. He just snaps. He saws up Stephen Dorff as, as Stephen Dorff is like saying, F you, F you, uh, which is pretty funny. And uh, he kills Stephen Dorff. And then the black haired chick runs out of the house and she's chased in the woods. We get some pretty good suspense here. Uh, she's in the woods. Um, and eventually she gets caught in a bear trap. Well, that the family just has on their property. I thought that was a little bit too much of a coincidence, but she's in a bear trap, and you know Leatherface has a crush on him. And she, uh, I mean, you know Leatherface has a crush on her, and she kind of has a crush on him. So it's a question of, do you think Leatherface is going to kill her or not? He's right there with her, and uh, she's like trying to talk him out of it, but her his mom is like saying, no, do it, do it, do it. So, you know, and finally he he gives in and slices her head off with a chainsaw in a really cool scene. She He pulls it back, and he goes, Whoosh, like that, and just... It, happens like all at once. It's a cool gore scene. Her freaking head goes flying. I like that. And then it gets, after that, it gets at the end of the movie, and uh, it's playing the song from the trailer. If you've seen the trailer, it's like, it's how it is. It's over. <laughs> Which is really funny that they actually put the trailer song in here. And it's showing Leatherface down in his uh, basement or whatever, his family's house, and he's stitching together like the chick's face. And he puts it on, and he starts putting some lipstick on to decorate it. And he looks at himself in the mirror, and he freaking busts uh, the glass and then it goes off and you hear a chainsaw sound. Uh, cool ending, I like that. And you can see Grandpa in this film before he's like really old. He's at the beginning of the film and uh, the, the uh, guy that they thought was stealing their pigs that I told you about, he's at the, the Grandpa's at the beginning of the film with him and when Leatherface won't kill him, the Grandpa actually stands up because he's younger here and he's got the the uh, hammer. He just like knocks the dude's brains out in the head and kills him, which I thought was funny. Uh, you know, Grandpa, he's a good, he's good at swinging. <laughs> yeah, all in all, I'll give this film three stars out of the four. Some of the acting's a little wishy-washy at first, but when the film starts kicking in, it really kicks in. It doesn't feel like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie for a big chunk of the film, but at the same time, it's still entertaining, and then it segues into more of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre-style film. But I thought that worked, because all these films have almost been exactly the same thing. I, by the time I get to, like, the seventh film, which I think this is, I'm like, shit, give me something a little different. I don't, you had to do something like this. You had to shake it up and do something different. Did you really need a Leatherface prequel? Did you really need one? No, you didn't. But at the same time, we got one, and this was a good film. It was good. Was it great? No, but it was good. So, all in all, I'll see you guys again with the next one.